In this video, we're going to build a budget versus actual dashboard, and we're going to get started right now. All right, we're here in Excel, and we're going to just go through the data set we're going to be using. If you want to follow along, it is in the description below. Feel free to download it. And there's actually two structures we're going to be looking at because typically in my professional experience, it's usually one or the other data set you're going to get into. And I'll show you how to deal with each uh, separately. All right. So for example, in this one, let me just zoom in. Let me show you the structure. Let's just add a freeze pane here. So I've got Alabama, Alabama, uh, budget, actual, you got a value, Arizona, budget, actual, and so on, right? That's structure number one. Structure number two, if I go in here, instead of doubling up, you have state, actual, and budget. And actually, structure number two is easier to deal with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you why that is. So let me just save this. We're going to open up a Tableau uh, workbook. Get a drink while that's doing it. All right, and we're going to bring that data set in. So I'm going to go downloads, I'm going to drop this in. All right, let's bring in structure number one. All right, so you can see state. And one thing I'm going to do just to help with the visualization, I'm going to take this off um, <clears throat> a geographical role because then otherwise every time we're going to drop it in, it's going to keep trying to create maps. So we just turn it off to none and go sheet one. All right, so whenever you do budget versus actuals, um, which is basically like you're measuring two things. So did you measure, uh, did you achieve it based on your target? That can be anything that can be performance. You know, you're doing KPIs, you're doing like yeah, budgeting, sales, forecasting, whatever it could be. So this is actually a very um, standard type of analysis. So let's say I've got state, right? And then I've got type. Okay. So I've got the two things and then we're going to bring the value in. So I'm going to bring it here into columns and you got the two like that. And, Straight away, you're like, cool, that was super simple. But uh, does it answer those two questions? Uh, the, the questions I'm about to ask, sorry, which is, did we meet the KPI? Did we meet the target? And by how much? Or did we not meet it? And by, and by how much? Those are kind of the main questions. And you want to be able to tell that very quickly. I can't do that from here. I can maybe add a label but then I still have to read it. So ideally what I want to do is a calculation that goes, if this is higher than this one, um, then make it red, right? Because we went over the budget, but it's very, very difficult to do that because if I go into the data structure, um, in terms of formula, it is very difficult to reference two values and compare them next to each other if they're in the same column, right? So if, number one, I have to detect if it's an actual, um, or a budget, and then I have to make sure it's in the same state and then mathematically compare them. It's very difficult. So what we prefer is to use that secondary structure, right? So let me show you how easy it is to use that one um, by comparison. So let's drop that in again. I'm going to bring in structure two. Again, we're going to change this state into, oh, just get rid of that geographical, uh, geographical role. And let's do the same thing. So this time I've got state, right? I can add actual. And this is only actual, so I can actually add budget next to it, right? And very quickly, I'm just going to do a quick calculation, and I'll explain this later on. Um, we're just going to compare the two here, right? So this checks for how off, uh, when the actuals went over the budget, right? Simple calculation, and straight away, I can see it, right? I can do all sorts of crazy things, which is, which again, I will explain uh, later on right? I can see the differences between the two. So I can see that actual is significantly higher than budget. And I can do all sorts of mathematical things like show me all the ones that are higher by an X amount. You know, there's heaps of things you can do, but you need it in that secondary structure. So let me show you how to transition from one to the other. So we're going to need Tableau prep to do some data cleansing. Now, if you've never used Tableau prep, this thing is just the best, right? Um, and it is basically a data cleansing tool. It lets you restructure things, lets you clean data, uh, just all the wonderful things that an analyst wants, right? It's sort of like a baby version of Alteryx if you've ever used that. Okay, so let's bring in the data. And if you want to learn all about Tableau Prep, I have heaps of content on it. So just check the description below. I've got courses and all sorts of stuff on it. So let's bring in structure one. 
and you can see it's building a flow. We've got the state, type, and value, so the data fields we're bringing in. I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go pivot, right? Which is basically we're going to rotate the data. So what we want to kind of pivot it with is this type field. But before you do that, you have to go into this setting right here and go rows to columns, right? Columns to rows is to unpivot, and then row, rows to columns is to pivot, which is what we want, right? So some people are going to be going, well, just do it in Excel. Uh, you know, why go through all this trouble? Well, the main reason is because um, every time that data comes in, you have to open up Excel, you have to highlight data, you have to pivot it, you have to structure it, you have to do all this kind of stuff. And if you need to do data cleansing on top of that, you got to repeat that every day. By doing it this way, all you do is when you come in, you just press this play button, runs the cleanse, you can add modifications as you go along if you need to. But once it's built, you just press play, go straight into Tableau desktop, or if you know anything about cloud, go straight into the cloud, updates your data, you don't have to do anything. And actually, you can even put Tableau prep on the cloud. But if you're interested in that, let me know. So I've got type here. I'm going to drop type here in the pivot rows to columns. So you can see once we add this value into the aggregate, you'll see this is now restructured. So you can see this is similar to structure number two. This is much easier to deal with. So what we're going to do is I'm not going to really output this, but if you really wanted to just output make it a CSV and off you go into Tableau. So I'm not going to do all that. Instead, we're going to go back into here. We're going to clear all this. All right. And then we're going to do a few examples. Now this structure to data, like I said before, is in this structure right here. All right. So you've got two value fields, right, that you can do formulas, one field versus the other field, and it makes things so much easier. So let's start with the simplest kind of visualization and we'll kind of build it up from there. So let's bring in state, let's bring in actual, and let's bring in budget. All right, so I've got two fields, one right next to the other. I can do that formula again and compare the two. So I can go create calculated field. Now you can do this, which is I can drag actual, <coughs> excuse me, and go is that larger than budget? Okay, and let's just go comparison. And you'd probably go, well, that's probably going to be okay. However, you got to be careful with this because in this particular data set, Alabama exists in one row, Arizona exists in one row, but sometimes the actuals and the budgets are actually a culmination of a lot of fields. So you could have little towns in there, let's say in a different data set, it goes state, Alabama, and then little town, and then actual and budget. So you don't actually want to compare the individuals, you want to compare the aggregate. Okay, so be very careful with that. So the best thing to do is once you've got your visualization to actually drag and drop from this top one straight in here. And what that does is it guarantees that what you're looking at and what you're basing your calculations on is actually what you're using. All right, so a little tip. I've seen too many times that that's a mistake. So we're going to go the number of times actual was greater than the budget. So we're going to go in here. And we're going to go OK, formula is OK. And then we can use that Boolean, right, this true or false result, and simply drop it into color, right? Straight away, I can see all the types, uh, all the times that it has failed. So let's change the color here to something more appropriate. So uh, every time it's true, I want it to be red. And every time it's uh, not true, we want it to be green, which means we were under budget. So you can see Alabama, if I look at this value, the actual was 6,684, the budget was 2,038. Um, I can even group this, so I can grab comparison, drop it here into rows, and now I've split them up. I probably want to have this at the top because it's kind of the first thing you want to talk about. Like, okay, these are all the places we want to talk about, and this is how, um, how bad it is. You can even sort them by how bad the deficit is. So let's say I go create calculated field. Instead of doing the greater than, less than, we can say, uh, oh, sorry, not that, actual minus budget. So basically the difference. And go OK. And then I can bring that, and this is a little bit tricky. Difference is a continuous value. So when I bring it in here, it's going to do all sorts of crazy business like this. What we actually want is we want difference to be a discrete um, value. So I'm going to go here and go convert to discrete. And then we're going to bring this into rows. And that just stops it from kind of going crazy. 
Now, the reason I brought that in is if I bring this in between here, right, I can actually sort this by how bad the deficit is, which means if I bring this in here, right, and convert this to continuous, this is probably a little bit more advanced, you can see that this one right here is the deficit. All right, so let's resort this. Uh, let's go. No, hang on, I'm sorting the wrong thing. It's this thing. Let's clear that. Oh, no, 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 sorry. This thing, sort. Oh, no, you can't sort. I think I have to go. Like this. There we go. That's what I was after. You gotta press this sort button right here. I don't know why you have to use that and not this one. But eh, whatever. So this is actually telling me Iowa is the worst case. Now this thing I don't actually want in here, so I can actually I think um, hide that by just right clicking show header, right? And that just kind of cleans it up um, with my visualization. So this tells me this difference is um, kind of the best and worst. So I was the worst, Alabama and all that. And this kind of helps you, like when you start doing strategic work uh, in, in our business or whatever, you're going, well, who are the first ones we've got to talk to? Um, and let's see what the issue is. And then you kind of go from there. All right. So that's kind of one variation you can do. Let's do another one. So I'm going to build that same thing. So actuals and budget. All right. So this next one is going to be a um, measure value. So instead of using this to kind of see what the difference is, you can actually get rid of this part entirely and let the visualization show you that, right? So what we do is, instead of bringing budget up here, we're going to grab budget, right? And we're going to drop it over this axis. Right, and you can see it's got this little square thing or whatever, um, and you drop it there. What that does is it creates a measure of value bucket, right? So you'll see the visualization and all the pills and stuff change, like so. So you can see that the measure of value is in here, and what's contained in there is anything you put in here. So if I have more measures, I can keep adding those in here, right? And it'll keep adding here in my visualization. All right, so that's how measure values work. Um, if you're not, if you still get confused by that, because I got confused by that early days, um, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do a video on that. All right, so I've got actuals and budgets. I can use that formula again, the comparison, and add some color, right? And just visually, you can actually see the difference, right? That that one is actually much, uh, the actual is much higher than this budget. We can again add that comparison to the first part. We'll flip these around. I want this kind of at the top. Oop. I think it's easier if I drag this one underneath. There we go. You always want the problem at the top because you want to highlight that this is what needs to be fixed. Right? So you can see that um, as a comparison. You can also go a little bit further than this, right? Which is you can start overlapping these fields. So this measured values is great because it's kind of like a side by side, but the overlap is kind of like a more KPI-ish um, in view. So let me show you how to build that variation, All right? So I'm gonna go state, I'm gonna go actual, I'm gonna go budget, All right? So still pretty standard. And on this second one, I'm gonna right click, we're gonna go dual axis. Right now, don't freak out with what you see, you know. So, if you're drinking something, just put it down. All right, so you can see it goes a little bit crazy. Don't worry. Um, what Tableau is doing is because it's on the automatic setting, based on the structure you have, it tries to guess the best way to visualize the data. But automatic's not always, you know, it's not always good. I'd say like 90% of the time, it's pretty good. So, I'm going to switch this to bar. Right, and make sure you're in the all setting. Now, what this is doing is it's actually overlapped one on top of the other. Okay, but it's a bit difficult to see because they're kind of the same shape. So what I'm gonna do, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this to fit width, right? And I'm gonna make this a little bit wider, like that. Okay, so you can do a bar in bar kind of view. So what you do is I believe the smaller one is the budget yes okay so you want the um, the the one that's on top which is the orange to be thinner right so you go in here into budget go size and you want to reduce this by about maybe 25% okay 
Typically what I do is it's a third of whatever the one behind it is. So you just keep adjusting it. And that seems to kind of look the best. So maybe like something like that, all right? And actually, you kind of don't want the budget to be the small one. You want the big one to be the budget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around. So you just grab the first one and put it behind the other one. And that just reverses, reverses them, okay? So let's make this one larger. Okay, and then we'll switch the other one to be smaller. All right. Okay, like so. And then what we do is also we'll make the one in the back a little bit translucent. So we'll reduce the opacity a little bit, right? Because we want the actual to pop out, right? We can use that comparison and drop it into rows, like so. Now, again, we want the trues to be on top. So let's drop that false at the bottom. Okay, so you can see these are all the trues, right? And you can see that um, these ones have, I mean, look at Iowa, it's massive, right? You can see straight away just from here. And what's interesting is you don't even have to mention any numbers. You don't have to tell someone, it's like, this is 40. They just know because the way the human brain works is they, they can just recognize this. Oh, the other thing you gotta make sure of, whenever you use dual axis, these need to be synchronized if they're on the same time, uh, same value scale, right? Especially if you're doing these kinds of comparisons, because let's say this only goes up to 10,000, but the other one, but the one on the top goes up to 30,000. Um, it's very easy to miss. And then the way it visualizes, you think, oh man, we've gone over budget. So just make sure that's synchronized if you need it to be synchronized for your type of visualization. All right. So there is that type. And there is one more we're going to do, which is a variation on this one. So let's build one more. So I'm gonna go state. Again, we're gonna go actual. We're gonna go a little bit faster this time, actual budget, because I don't want this to go too long. We're going to right click dual axis again, right? Switch this to bar. Now, I think I'm going to reverse these straight away, okay? Um, let's make this a little bit wider. Okay, something, maybe something like that, okay? Now let's make the actual, um, sorry, let's make the budget this time smaller. Okay, so you can only see, there's only a few here, budget like that, something, maybe not two things, something like that, right? And then for the actual, what we're going to do is instead of bar, we're going to use a Gantt. And what that does is it just makes a vertical slit instead of a, an entire bar, right? You can see it come out like this, there you go, right? And what we can actually do, is for the actuals, uh, did I reverse this? This is the budget. Yeah, that's fine actually. Uh, no, I think I got this in reverse. I got this in reverse, sorry. This one should be Gantt. This one should be bar, my bad. Okay, let's reverse this. I think for this one, it's actually this way. Okay, so let's make this one thinner like so, and make this one a lot wider. Yes, that's what I want. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and now for the uh, for the actuals, instead of using that as a color, we wanna use that comparison as a color, right? So you can see that it's gone way over. For the budget, instead of measure names as the color, we want this to be something like black, really noticeable kind of colors, okay? something like that. So that's a, another type of visualization. So we went through heaps of different kind of structures and kind of ways to clean the data structure. So I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to drop a like, be sure to subscribe. I release new videos uh, three times a week. Um, and until then, have a great day and bye.